I'm Diane Rezignola with NAREIT, and in conjunction with NAREIT's REIT Week, I'm here today with Wendy Simpson, Chairman and CEO of LTC Properties. Wendy, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you, and it's great to see you, Diane. LTC Properties invests in senior housing and healthcare properties. How did the pandemic impact this sector and LTC? Well, because it's my uh, field of concentration, it seems like our industry was the hardest hit. Uh, because our operators take care of so many frail uh, residents on a daily basis. And the pandemic seemed to start in a nursing home in Washington. So that was very high profile at the beginning. And the uh, number of deaths and near deaths in the industry is just so painful uh, to know. Um, it seems inappropriate still for us to talk about the financial impact of the pandemic, it seems unfeeling, but as a public company, LTC and all of its competitors and, and uh, peers have had to talk about it. And um, it has been difficult for us, uh, but as a family, as a personal family within LTC, we've weathered the pandemic very well. And as you and I were talking about before we started recording, um, we pivoted to uh, at home work, um, and it seems to have worked extremely well. I don't know if we'll ever go back to five days a week, 52 weeks a year in the office. We also hired three people during this uh, pandemic, and I was a little bit skeptical about onboarding them, and it worked very well. Um, and so I think as a company, LTC uh, did um, come out fairly well in the pandemic. We're deeply grateful for what the government has provided in um, financing for our operators and for the industry in total. Uh, it was a great challenge uh, to the industry and they're only beginning to recover. We're able to support our operators financially because we have a strong balance sheet. So we, we very much understand that our operators had a much, much more difficult time than LTC did as a company. Was it important to work with your operators throughout the COVID-19 crisis? And what ways did you find worked best? It was vitally important. I mean, we, we feel that we are very close to our operators, but we got even closer. Of course, the first, the first instinct was to call everybody and say, what's going on? You know, what are you doing to stop this? What, you know, how, how do we report this to our shareholders? And very quickly, I hope we move to what can we do to help you? You know, uh, what can we do to provide you with the support? And so we set up uh, sites to have operators work together. We reallocated some of our resources so people would reach out to suppliers and find out where supplies were available and get a hold of our operators. And, you know, this is where the supplies are available. We tried not to uh, overburden them with our questions about what was going on because they had so many other issues to deal with other than, you know, LTC's needs. Um, we, we worked very closely with the associations uh, who were very, very active in working with government to get government understanding and government funding. And so that was an area uh, we worked on for uh, help with our with our operators. And then we work to help find systems to provide um, ionization, uh, bipolar ionization. We, we developed with, a, with uh, one of our partners, a smart design program that will help with um, keeping viruses out of facilities and, um, and improving the air quality, which air quality seems to be one of the big issues these days. And if this virus indeed was 100% airborne, um, so, you know, we did everything we could as a non-operator to support them and, of course, provide some financial support when it was needed and, and uh, as soon as it was needed. Is there anything you have taken away from the pandemic that is a positive or a sea change? I think good operators always valued their staff, but now uh, there were so many amazing people who didn't waver or desert 
you know, and I hope that recognition holds beyond recovery. Every industry, it seems like uh, right now, is looking for labor, is looking for qualified labor. And our industry was already struggling before the pandemic, and, and still we struggle. But I am amazed and, and in awe of people in the facilities. So I hope that changes. There's going to be some uh, morphing of design. I'm not sure that the, that the one dining room is going to be the dining of the future. And assisted living was already uh, morphing in terms of design, adding more dining options, small, small dining rooms, places to get snacks and that sort of thing. Skilled nursing still, I think uh, you're going to find more uh, separation in terms of isol not isolation, but spaces between beds and units. I think the first the first notice of a virus is just going to be jumped on like, like nothing we've ever seen before. So I think the high intensity knowledge of, of what could happen uh, will, will probably make it impossible for something like this to happen again, I hope. Wendy, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Diane. For more from Nay Reads Reet Week, visit reet.com.